Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with a new devotion on the Bible app titled The Out of Balance Believer, and mm-hmm. I think this will be a nice little kind of interruption to all those wonderful New Morning Mercies devotionals that we've done recently, and uh, yes. this one will kind of target into one specific thing. But anyways, there's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick up with the Devo. Let's do it. The first scripture is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and it says this, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And the next scripture is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, and it says this, He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. So the devotional starts out with the amplified version of 1 Peter 5, 8. And I'm going to read it because some of the wording I think is important. It says, be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For that enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. So if you're like me, you've read or heard today's scripture written by Peter a thousand times. It is great advice, and it is the focus of many sermons, Bible studies, and devotions. I wonder, however, how many of us understand what being well-balanced really means. There was a time when I thought being well-balanced meant eating right, exercising, drinking water, and getting plenty of rest. While these contribute to balanced living, they are not absolute. Balance is far more complex than watching what we put in our mouths or how much physical activity and sleep we get. Balance is achieving and maintaining a state of moderation and harmony in every area of our lives. When something is unbalanced, it does not operate as intended. The uneven distribution of weight causes one object to bear the burden of another. This generates strain. Over time, the weight-bearing object becomes overworked and tired, creating a weakened, vulnerable state that opens the door to unintended consequences. This is what Peter is referring to in Scripture when he warns of the enemy, the devil roaming like a lion, seeking to seize and devour its prey. Lions are stealthy, calculated creatures who exhibit great patience. Lions lie and wait for hours before charging unsuspecting herds. At the right time, they launch a surprise attack, causing the herd to disperse and panic, leaving the weaker animals exposed and vulnerable. Our enemy is as patient as a lion. He watches us in silence as we work in excess. He sees our depleted energy from taking on too many volunteer opportunities at school and church. He observes us expending our attention on our children, thus ignoring our spouses. He knows when we are weak, overwhelmed, and exhausted. He knows when we reach the point at which we can no longer protect ourselves. And that is when he attacks our health, mind, finances, relationships, and family. We have all experienced seasons of unbalance. However, we can avoid them in the future by asking God to reveal the vulnerable areas in our lives that open the door to the enemy. God is faithful. Scripture tells us that he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Couple this promise with vigilance and caution, and we are guaranteed the strength and poise to come out victorious when the rest of the herd scatters. Yeah, I've actually never thought about it that way when it read the Amplified Bible, which is not a translation that I typically read at all. Um, But it said, be well balanced, where the scripture says, in my translation says, stay alert. Mm -hmm. But then it started to dawn on me. I also thought being well balanced meant eating right, not spending too much time at work, not spending too much time on leisure, you know, like uh, working out, just kind of creating like a balanced life. Mm -hmm. But then as you were reading, I thought to myself, whenever I was playing football pretty competitively, if you're playing on defense, they always say like, be careful to not get caught flat-footed. 
what that means is, is that if, if your like opponent is right in front of you and they're going to run towards you and your feet are flat on the floor, you're not going to be able to pick up your feet and move backwards as fast as they're moving forward and you get caught flat footed and they blow right by you and mm-hmm. they score a touchdown. And so they always encourage you to like be on your toes and that's like another metaphor for this whole thing is just, yeah. you know, you never want to get caught flat footed because you get caught in a slow moment in a vulnerable moment in a weak moment and people take advantage of that. Right. And it's like, oh, wow. Okay. Now I understand what it means by being well balanced or by being alert. Mm-hmm. I'm on my toes and I'm, I'm prepared or I'm ready to be attacked by an enemy who is actually literally prowling around like yeah. a lion looking for someone to devour. Mm -hmm. And so he's looking for the weak link. Mm -hmm. And so I want to live my life in a way that keeps me on my toes so much so that I keep him on his toes where he doesn't know where to come after me Mm -hmm. because he can't see a weak part in the armor of Christ that I'm wearing. Yeah. But if you are like me, then you know there's certain areas that you do struggle in. Like for me, I work way too much. And then when I'm overtired and Tori comes to talk to me about something and then I lash out at her or I'm, or I'm not spending quality time with Micah, well, guess what? Now he's going to get a, f- a foothold of my family. Mm-hmm. And so I, I love how the scripture continues, be of sober mind yeah. to think to yourself, okay, where would I be weak? Because I think that I'm making up for my weakness by being really strong in some areas, but that doesn't work when it comes to this spiritual attack. Yeah, and so I would encourage us all to spend time at one point, like this weekend, even to to give yourself kind of that sober look and be like, where am I weak? Where am I out of balance or not on my toes? Yeah, and I love that the end of the devotional kind of opened that up to be like God is faithful to show you. So if you ask God, like, what area am I vulnerable in that you can come in and in my weakness give me strength? he's faithful to give you eyes to see that. And I was kind of the same with you thinking of an example as a dancer growing up, we would work on our balance all the time because if your balance is off that day, you are not going to perform well because you're not going to turn as well. You're not going to have your center of gravity. (laughs) Like literally your whole routine is not going to function as well as it should if your balance Mm -hmm. is off. And I love to think about this, not just in life, but in our spiritual walk with God of like, okay, are we spending enough quality time with Jesus in prayer, are we spending enough time in the word? Like, what does it look like in our life to be well balanced spiritually? Are we doing life in community? Because I do think, I even realized this the other day with me, I was spending a lot of time in God's word, but I wasn't spending a lot of time journaling because I could not find my journal and it was frustrating me. And I genuinely felt off with God because I connect with him so much via my journal. And it wasn't that I had stopped praying, but there's something for me that when my like the pen hits the paper, it's like I immediately feel more intimate with God. And my my thoughts align differently. I'm not as scatterbrained. Like I remember his faithfulness in new ways as I'm praying out certain prayers. I'm reminded of his faithfulness in other areas of my life. Why would I doubt you here? And it was like, wow, I was I was unbalanced. I was feeling off because yes, I was checking the mark of reading the word and praying, but I wasn't doing one of the things that I know brings me intimacy with the father. And so whatever that looks like for you, whether that's going out on a prayer walk or going out in nature, like what fills your cup spiritually and start writing these things down so that you have like your arsenal with God to be like, okay, when I'm feeling off, I can go back to this list and be like, oh, I have not been doing X, Y, Z. I have not had a conversation with my mentor, my accountability partner. I have not actually spent enough time in God's word, reminding myself of truth. I have not spent time journaling out my thoughts so that I could be reminded of his faithfulness and how I can be so intimate with him as father and friend. And so I think just having that well-balanced spiritual walk with God will continue to arm you in the areas of your life that the enemy is going to be looking for your vulnerability. Yeah, I have two thoughts. The first of which is, where was your journal? I still can't find it. Oh, you can't? No, I had to get an old journal and just like write in random pages, and it's very upsetting. Well, where's the last place you had it? I'm <laughs> about everyone, listen. 
no one likes to be asked that question, but that's why I enjoy asking it. I'm, I'm not, I'm not being serious. Okay. Thanks, I do have a second serious thing to say. I saw a quote and it kind of related to what you're saying about balance right there. It's a quote by Charles Spurgeon that said this, when asked, what is more important, praying or reading the Bible? I ask, what is more important, breathing in or breathing out? Wow. And yeah. just how they work together. So true. And we need to make sure that we're uh, in our spiritual walk. We're doing everything that works together for our walk with Christ. So good. Want to pray something out? Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this devotional. We thank you for the truth of your word. Father, we know that we have a very real enemy who is roaming around just searching for our weak spots so that he can devour, Father. He seeks to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Lord, you seek to bring us life and life abundant, Father. We thank you for that. We thank you for the armor that you have given us to put on every single day. Father, we pray today that you give us eyes to see our weak spots, our vulnerable spots, Father, so that in those weaknesses, your strength can be made known, Father. We love you so much. Um, we thank you for all you've revealed to us today, and we're excited to see how you'll continue molding and forming us into your likeness. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. When now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we'll be talking to you tomorrow. Adios. Adios.